How does the Beltway battle affect a major mining company? For answers, we're joined now by Sean Boyd. He's the chief executive of Agnico Eagle Mines. Sean Boyd, good to have you with us on Bloomberg. Uh, before we get to your perspective on what's going on in Washington and people seeking some safety from uncertainty, tell us about the results at Agnico Eagle Mines. They were just out moments ago. Uh, exactly, and uh, we had a um, uh, less than satisfactory uh, first half in our view. Uh, we we're expecting to produce a little bit more gold than we did. Uh, we're set up for a much stronger second half, though. We see output increasing by about 20% as we move through the second half. We added additional crushing capacity at our largest mine in the Canadian Arctic. So we're set up um, to see not only an increase in production, but also a decline in unit costs as we move through the second half of this year. Sean Boyd, can you give us an idea of what caused the shortfall, at least if you compare it against what analysts were looking for in terms of sales? Um, it was really an issue around the big mine, which is Meadowbank in the Canadian Arctic. We had, unfortunately, uh, lost some days of production. We had a fire in our kitchen facility in the Canadian Arctic, um, and we talked about that in March and April. So that impacted the second quarter. Um, but we've added capacity there, and as we move through the second half of this year, uh, we're seeing an increase in our ore production by about 30 percent, so that'll increase output there uh, at that mine by about 50 percent as we see increased grades as well. Now, Sean, that Meadowbank mine, that is an open pit mine. Tell me about the other open pit mine you've got in Finland, Kittila. Uh, Kittila is a, a large mine. It's got a mine life that's approaching 50 years. Uh, what we find at that mine is that it is actually, the infrastructure is undersized, so we're looking to expand it. But it's one that's grown dramatically. It's currently our largest gold deposit. And uh, we've got um, a situation there where costs are a bit high. We're working our costs down. Um, but it's going to be a big performer for us as we move forward, given its long mine life. And we just announced some recent drill results uh, in the press release, which show that we've extended uh, one section of the deposit by another 200 meters. So it's wide open, and we think it's going to continue to grow. Tell me about what's going on in northwestern Quebec. This is your flagship mine, La Ronde. What's happening there? Are you able to increase production? Uh, we've actually uh, been working on uh, putting in new infrastructure at depth, and that mine actually accesses this newer ore uh, as we move towards the end of this year. So we'll be getting into higher grade material. That's our flagship, as you say. It's been running since 1988. Costs are extremely low there. We produce an ounce of gold there for uh, less than $250 an ounce. So it's working quite well. We've got three mines running in Quebec. They're good, steady performers uh, producing a lot of gold, and we will see an increase in output coming out of that region uh, given the fact that we're moving into higher grades at the flagship mine, La Ronde. Now, when you talk about output, I just want to get your thoughts. Over one million ounces are going to be produced this year. That's correct. We're going to approach close to 1.1 million ounces, which is up from about a million ounces in 2010. Now, are you seeing increased demand related specifically to the uncertainty involving debt negotiations in the United States, uncertainty over debt renegotiations in Greece, in Europe? Um, I think that all is part of the equation, um, that we see short-term uncertainty having a short-term impact on gold prices. But there are major fundamental issues around uh, the size of debt, uh, the inability to control spending uh, at the government level. There's really an ongoing debasement of, of paper currency, which is forcing people to start to look at gold. And, and we think that uh, investment case is just starting as people realize that uh, you know, one of the ways out of this debt situation is to inflate your way out and continue to debase your currency. And I think we're going to see that as we move forward and people are starting to realize that and they're starting to move towards gold. Sean, any possibility of increase in the dividend, any change in the dividend policy of Ignico Eagle Mines? Uh, we bumped it 250% uh, in December. Uh, right. We have one of the longest standing dividend tr paying track records in the gold space, 29 years. Uh, we revisit that every year uh, in the fourth quarter, and given our, our increase in production, our ability to generate increased cash flows off of that larger production base, we will be certainly looking to increase our dividend. All right. I want to thank you very much, Sean Boyd. He's the chief executive of Agnico Eagle Mines.